Hello and welcome to this new lecture. Now we'll try to obtain an expression for the indicated thermal efficiency for an auto cycle. So let's define the indicated thermal efficiency. Let's call it eta equal to the indicated work. So remember that the indicated work is the work uh, produced by the air inside the cylinder and that's why it is called the indicated thermal efficiency because eta here is calculated based on the indicated work so if you want to calculate for example the brake thermal efficiency then eta will be defined based on the brake work which is the work produced by the crankshaft of course the work produced by the crankshaft will be less than the indicated work due to losses so this will be W cycle divided by the heat input divided by QN. So graphically, W cycle is the area inside this curve here that represents the auto cycle. And we have the heat input related to the process from 2 to 3. So this is a QN. And we have the heat rejected related to the process from 4 to 1, which is a Q out. So for any thermodynamics power cycle, so if we consider a power cycle, this power cycle will take an energy input, Qn, from a hot thermal reservoir. So part of this energy input will be converted to a work, W cycle, and the remaining part will be rejected to a cold thermal reservoir, Q out. So now we can say that W cycle is simply the difference between Q in and the Q out. So it is a Q in minus Q out. So replace, uh, replacing W cycle in this equation here, we can say that eta will be equal to 1 minus Q out divided by a Q in. And in the previous video, we have said that the Q in is related to the temperature difference. It is MCV T3 minus t2 so of course here assuming a constant value for the specific heat cv similarly q out is m cv times t4 minus t1 so remember that always to put delta t in such a way to obtain a positive value for q now eta will become 1 minus q out divided by qn will simplify mcv so we'll have t4 minus T1 divided by T3 minus T2. So looking at this equation, if we want to calculate uh, eta, we need to find all the temperatures inside the cycle. However, we can modify this equation in order to obtain a much more interesting form. So we can say that this will be 1 minus, taking T4 as a common factor, this will be 1 minus T1 over T4 divided by taking t3 as a common factor 1 minus t2 divided by t3 and if we consider back the isentropic compression process from 1 to 2 we have said that t2 divided by t1 is related to the compression ratio r so r to power gamma minus 1 and similarly in the isentropic expansion process t4 divided by t3 is 1 over r to power gamma minus 1. And also we can say this equation, we can say it as t3 divided by t4 will be equal to r to power gamma minus 1. So looking at these two equations here, since uh, the two are equal to r to power gamma minus 1, we can say that t2 divided by t1 is equal to t3 divided by t4. So, replacing the positions of these two here, we can say that T2 divided by T3 is equal to T1 divided by T4. Now, multiplying by minus 1 and adding plus 1, we will have 1 minus T2 divided by T3 will be equal to 1 minus T1 divided by T4. So in this way, going back to the eta equation, we can simplify these two factors since they are equal. So now eta will be equal 1 minus T4 divided by T3. 
and t4 divided by t3 is 1 over r to power gamma minus 1. So uh, eta in this case will be 1 minus 1 over r to power gamma minus 1. So looking now at the indicated thermal efficiency equation, we can easily conclude that in order to improve the thermal efficiency of an auto cycle, we can simply increase the compression ratio. So to improve eta, we can increase the compression ratio R. However, in actual spark ignition engines and for very high compression ratios, the temperature of the air and the fuel mixture may rise above the auto ignition temperature of the fuel. So what do we mean by the auto ignition temperature of the fuel? So this is the temperature when the fuel will auto ignite without the help of a spark plug. So for very high compression ratios, the temperature of air fuel mixture may rise above the auto ignition temperature of the fuel. So this is the temperature where the fuel will auto ignite without the help of a spark plug, of course, producing detonation and rapid burn inside the, the cylinder and as a result, damaging the engine. So producing detonation and rapid burn that will damage the engine. So looking at the compression equation, you can see that the temperature at the end of compression is related to the compression ratio. So higher compression ratios means uh, higher temperature. So imagine this scenario, the piston is moving upward compressing the air and the fuel mixture. However, let's say during compression, the fuel has reached the auto ignition temperature, so producing detonation. So this detonation will uh, exert a downward force on the piston and the piston is moving upward. And of course, this will damage the engine. Now, high compression ratios greater than 10 should be avoided, should be avoided in order to avoid auto ignition and when auto ignition happens the engine will produce an audible noise called engine knock so engine knock should be avoided by avoiding high compression ratios greater than 10. now Let's go ahead and open the Excel file called AutoCycle uh, provided under the exercise files supplied in the last section of this course. So please download the exercise files uh, provided in the last section of this course and go ahead and open the AutoCycle Excel file in order to plot this equation and to see the variation of the thermal efficiency with the compression ratio. So let's go ahead and open the AutoCycle Excel file. So select cell A1, type in gamma, then hit the tab key to select cell B1. So the values uh, of gamma for air will vary between 1.3 and 1.4. So for this example, we'll choose 1.4. Now select cell A3 and type in R, which is the compression ratio, then cell B3, type in eta. Now we'll choose a range for R between 1 and 10 with an increment of 1. So we'll have 1 then two so here we can select a4 and a5 and drag the autofill handle in order to autofill now let's type in the equation for eta so select cell b4 now to tell excel we are typing in an equation 
uh, first to press on the equal sign on the keyboard next uh, to the backspace button then we type in the equation which is 1 minus 1 divided by open up the parenthesis select cell A4 R to power so the power sign is shift then 6 the 6 button then open up the parenthesis to power gamma minus 1 so select cell B1 then press the F4 key on the keyboard so this will add uh, the two dollar signs meaning we are using an absolute cell reference so the address of this cell will not change when we use the autofill okay minus one close the parenthesis twice then hit ctrl enter to enter the equation and stay on the same cell now double click on the autofill handle to autofill uh, the equation in all the cells so you can see that for example in uh, cell b5 the cell address has uh, changed uh, from A4 to A5 so we are using now the value of the compression ratio in cell A5 uh, in the calculation however the value for gamma is not changed so we are using an absolute cell reference so this cell address is not uh, changing when we are using the autofill okay now let's plot this uh, data select all the cells from A3 to B13 click on insert then go to the charts section click on insert the scatter then choose scatter with the smooth lines and markers so select it here and delete it you can enlarge this uh, plot click on this plus sign then uh, select access titles you can also uh, put access titles so let's uh, put thermal efficiency and the y-axis and in the axis x-axis we'll put compression ratio and hit enter so looking at this graph you can see that for low compression ratios the increase of thermal efficiency is uh, is a steep however for compression ratios greater than 8 the increase is uh, flattened out so we'll have more gradual increase of Thermal, uh, thermal efficiency so we will not benefit a lot uh, by choosing high compression ratios in order to increase the thermal efficiency now uh, typical compression ratios in the spark ignition engines are uh, choose between 6 and 10 okay so between 6 and 10 will have good uh, thermal efficiencies however this is the thermal efficiency for an auto cycle which is the ideal cycle however in actual uh, spark ignition engines will have uh, much lower thermal efficiency due to losses and irreversibilities uh, present inside the cycle so typical value of indicated thermal efficiency in actual spark ignition engines are between 0.25 and 0.3 so now we know about the indicated thermal efficiency variation with respect to the compression ratio in the next lecture let's talk about the indicated mean effective pressure for an auto cycle so see you in the next video